Browser automation is great, but sometimes it's really hard to get the back end in the right state to test a very specific scenario. Let's mash on that. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the ASP Net Monsters. In today's episode, we're going to delve a little bit deeper into Playwright, and it sounds like we're going to talk a little bit about how to set up test states. Yeah, well, what we're going to play with is uh, intercepting network calls so that we maybe don't have to set up that backend to get it in the right state. Um, so let's just, as a quick refresher, we'll have a link to the previous show down the, in the notes here where we uh, get started with Playwright. Uh, but just as a quick refresher, we have this uh, simple little app that displays public holidays that... Uh, we wrote for a previous episode where we were talking about dates, and um, there's a view version of this app, which is what we're testing with Playwright. So our little test will go to this page, take a screenshot of it, and that's about all it did for our getting started piece. Uh, but what I'd like to do is test a few different scenarios, maybe where the API returns different data, because this page actually calls an API endpoint here on my app. Uh, that returns some data. So we'll just have it maybe uh, test a scenario where it's returning some different data, and then also test an error scenario. And that's the one that I always find is a little bit tricky to test, uh, to, to test the, f the browser app where you know the network, connect the network failed or uh, the server returned some kind of error and making sure that the application actually displays that error. So uh, just as a quick refresher though, here's our our playwright test, we create a browser context here, and then we just tell it, we create a new page for it, Go tell it to go to a specific page. Uh, we click on that view link that I clicked on manually when I was looking at it. We take a screenshot and then close the browser. That all happens really quickly. So to run that, I just do node and then basic web tests. It's just a simple node app basically, and it's gonna fire that up, run it, and right, so I have this running headless right now, so we don't even see the browser come up. It happened really quick. There's that snapshot that I took of the app. Easy enough. Okay, so let's take a look at this concept of intercepting the network call. Um, so one of the things that I would like to do is just have that API return some different data. So what I can do here is I can set up, actually I can do this even further up here. I would need to do it but right after we create the page. So I'm gonna define some fake holidays here that I want to return. So we have January 2nd and then just some other totally fake holiday. And what we do is we can set up these routes with the page. We can do this globally off of the browser context as well. I'm just gonna do it off the page. I'm gonna say if anybody calls API slash public holidays, that's the wrong one. I would like it to return these fake holidays here. We're going to return status code 200, and then the body of the response is going to be uh, these fake holidays that I've defined. So if I run this now with that screenshot, I would expect to see these two holidays that we've defined instead of whatever with the back end for my app was actually. Ooh, let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> oh, is it done already? I think so. No, that did not work because uh, I, it did work, but I forgot to save it, so it ran the old version. I think that counts as not working. There we go. Uh, so what I love about this is how fast that was. One of the things I really love about that. Like that returned really quick. That started up mm -hmm. a browser, took a screenshot, navigated to some pages, made a fake network request, or it made a network request as far as the browser is concerned. We just returned something different. So that was easy enough. Uh, that's returning some fake data. Now, instead, what we might want to do is what I was talking about earlier, returning an error state. So here, I want the server to return a 500 error and just the, so the string that says server error, whatever that happens. And then what I would like to do is make sure that uh, when that does happen, so if the server returns an error, that we actually display an error message so that the user knows something bad happened and isn't just waiting for something to return that never returns. So I can run this and now it's just blank. It's not displaying an error yet. Uh, but I know that 
basically what I would like it to do is display some error message in a element with a specific ID. So I can go and after after we go to that page, I'm going to look for the text contact of an element with the ID API error. That doesn't exist in there yet, but we'll go at it in a minute. And I'm going to give it a really short timeout because I don't want it to sit there and wait for a really long time. Uh, the default is actually 30 seconds on these things, which is a long time to wait. Uh, I just want it to basically return almost right away this 100 milliseconds, especially since we're just stubbing out that network call, uh, intercepting it and returning 500 right away. We shouldn't have to wait very long. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is assert that an error message was returned. Uh, a bang bang, you're a boolean. Check on this to just make sure that that there's some text there that's displayed. For the purposes of my test, I don't really care too much what the text is. I just want to make sure that something was displayed in this API error container. Okay, okay so I can run this now. And I would expect that assertion to fail, hopefully. And it did. So here it actually timed out. So it said uh, the API error thing didn't happen. Uh, you, what you'll notice here, though, is that I'm getting this warning. So my process didn't actually return because what happens if this times out is it throws an exception and I didn't handle that exception. Uh, so the way we should probably be writing this is that we would do a try catch, wrap everything here around a try catch that we're doing in a try catch. Rather a finally, perhaps. Okay. So we'll do a catch and then we'll maybe just write out the error. So just wrapping all of the work that we're doing with Playwright after we've created the page, uh, wrapping that in a try catch, make sure that we handle it, uh, and then close the browser properly after. Just make sure that it doesn't like stay hanging around like this. Now it should kind of fail more gracefully. So it did exit with an error code now. Uh, actually, I probably didn't have an error code. I should change that to return an error with a error Number, yeah, you but could, you could probably just take the catch out. Like, so long as you're cleaning up the browser. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, probably. Okay. I think it's uh, something else is already logging that's that information out. Right there. Yeah. Okay. All right, but oh, ideally, we'll we ideally we we want the process return an error so that we can catch it in our build pipeline. Yes, that's true. How do I do that in a Node app? Um, without this complaining about unhandled promise rejections? I don't know. Exit. I don't import eat. from promise? What, what is that? Feels huh. like... Negative 12. <laughs> I don't know what I just imported. Exit from process, OK. I don't know if that'll work. We'll find out. Maybe. It's not complaining, so who's not a node expert? Yeah. All right, yeah. Okay. So not really the point of the episode, but uh, what I wanted to show was now that we can actually go and assert that that is happening. So or that we are displaying that error message. So I handily had this little piece of razor commented out, but basically How convenient. Yeah. So I already do have the error handling logic inside my uh, piece that goes and fetches the data from that API response. So if it's not okay, it just sets this dot error message to error loading data. And then if error message exists, if there's a value there, we're going to display this alert of type error with the error message in it. Uh, so we should be able to run this now. And of course the the app itself that's running because it's connected to the back end here is working just fine. Once it spins up, I can go to the view sample and it displays the data just fine. But now when I run my test, it should, let me just clear that. It 
should run successfully. And if we look at, so we didn't have any errors come back and the assertion passed. And when we come look here, we can see that it says error loading data. Very nice. Super handy, I think, uh, trying to stub that out in a like working app when you're trying to test these kinds of scenarios can be very difficult. So this just makes it really easy. Yeah, it's nice, definitely. So that's all I had for today. Uh, I am working on another application that's going to have more like the login pieces and have kind of some more complex scenarios that we can work through. And uh, next time we we dive into Playwright, we'll hopefully be be looking at that. Sounds good. I look forward to it. Well, everybody, remember to like, comment, and share. And we'll see everybody on next week's episode.